brought to you by the Las Cruces Sun News. This is Straight Shooter. What is going on, everybody? This is Justin Martinez, a.k.a. Jay the Sports Dude. And if you are listening right now, let me just say thank you for tuning in to Straight Shooter, the podcast where I shoot from the hip and give you everything that you need to know about the New Mexico State men's basketball team. This is episode 12 of our season-long journey. So if you're a returning listener, then welcome back. I missed you. And if you're new to the program, well, then welcome to the family. Where have you been all my life? Guys, we have a great one in store for you all tonight. So kick back and relax because I got at you. Let's get started. I'm coming to you from a place that I like to call the saloon. So Barkeep, what do we have on tap for today? On tap today is a recap of last week's games, an interview with Jabari Rice, and a preview of the UTRGV game. Alrighty, thank you Barkeep. I have my lasso in hand and it's time for our post-game roundup. The segment where I round up my thoughts on the most recent New Mexico State game. And in this case, the Aggies earned a 70-56 road win over Utah Valley on Thursday, followed by a 75-67 road win over Seattle on Saturday. So here are my takeaways. My first one comes from the win over Utah Valley, and it's that that same display of dominance on the offensive glass still has yet to translate into whack play so far. Now, New Mexico State only failed to get double-digit offensive rebounds in three games during non-conference play, which was 15 games long, but so far, the Aggies have already done that four times in their five whack contests. Now, they had six offensive rebounds against Utah Valley, and that's just not up to par with what we're used to seeing out of this squad. Granted, it didn't have a huge effect in this game because the Wolverines actually rank 280th in the country in offensive rebound percentage themselves. But still, this is something that's going to have to pick up when the Aggies play teams such as Cal State Bakersfield, when they play Cal Baptist again, and even the UTRGV, which I'm going to get into more. These are all teams that are really good at getting second chance points. So we'll see if New Mexico State can get back on track in that department. But now it is time for roundup number two. Now, my second takeaway comes from the win over Seattle, and it said after a really slow start, New Mexico State actually took a step in the right direction in regard to its ball security. Now, the Aggies committed five turnovers in the first 10 minutes against the Red Hawks, which is not good, and that's why they trailed 18-8, to so it was not looking too great for New Mexico State, but it actually did turn around for them. Now, the Aggies only committed six turnovers for the rest of the game and ultimately came away with a hard-earned W against a talented Red Hawks team. Anyone? No? Okay. (laughs) That's enough of that. But anyways, especially on nights when your shots aren't falling, it's important to not give your opponent some freebies either because then it just makes it even more of an uphill battle. And New Mexico State did a good job of that. Now, Seattle only scored two points off turnovers in the second half compared to the 11 that it scored in the first half. And that forced the team to put the ball through the hoop the hard way. Like I said, those first 10 minutes were not pretty by any stretch of the imagination. But hopefully that performance we saw the rest of the way is what we'll see moving forward from the Aggies. But now it is time for my roundup number three. So my third and final takeaway also comes from the win over Seattle. And it's that we can stop acting surprised with these Jabari Rice performances because the secret is out. This dude is a hooper. Now we already know that the redshirt sophomore is a walking bucket, but what impressed me the most from him in this game was his ability to contribute in other ways. Rice actually finished with a career high 11 rebounds to go along with his 17 points. And he had a pair of assists in addition to having a game high plus minus of 15. Now it really does feel like we're seeing this dude mature in front of our eyes. He started off the season as a wild card, somebody with potential to be a good player off the bench this season. Then he emerged as a sixth man and now that he's in the starting lineup, he is without a doubt one of the focal points of this team. It really has been a breakout season for Rice and as he continues to get more well-rounded with his rebounding, with his assisting, with his defending, he's only going to get better guys. So that buzzer means that we are out of time for segment number one. Now it is time for segment number two, which is an interview with the man himself, Jabari Rice, where he talks about his progression and the work he's been putting in in order to see these results. Barkeep, change the channel real quick. You got it, boss. First of all, congratulations on the pair of road wins. Thank you. Can I just talk about just what you guys learned from those those pair of uh, trips out there? Uh, I feel like we matured a little bit more. Uh, from the UMKC game, and uh, we made better decisions down the stretch, and we were more poised, and we stayed together a lot, and that was the most impressive thing to me. Yeah, 
couple of close games, especially early on in that Seattle game. Just how much does that really make the team stronger when you guys are able to come together and overcome something like that? Uh, it's not easy to win ever. That's what coach always tells us. And so when you get a win and you're able to pull it out and it's actually good win and not you survived it, but you just you did the right thing to survive it. And, and that's the best thing we got out of it. Yeah. Where's this team's confidence at? Because you guys are on, I think it's like a, is it a seven game win streak right now? Or uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Where's this team's confidence at right now? Uh, we're confident. We're really confident, especially because uh, Sean was seven points, so he's starting to get into the mix. Rail is scoring the ball more, too. He's getting back to his old self, and, and we're all starting to come together and just doing everything it takes to win and trying to buy in to Coach Jans and just listen more and, like, really focus, getting the gym more. Like, it's like for me, it's like a, a push for me now because we're, we're good now, and... and and uh, no, I don't ever want to just be satisfied with just right now, you know, and I'm looking at the bigger picture. And so I'm trying to work harder and, and everybody's just trying to get healthy and get right so we can keep going and ultimately get to our goal. Yeah. You mentioned uh, being in the gym. I think Jan said a couple of times that, that you had stayed in the summer, right, in order to work mm-hmm. on your game. Is this the hardest that you feel you've worked on on your game? Uh, Yes, I do. And it's just getting better. I'm getting in the gym more. I'm working on things that uh, I haven't been working on a lot and just trying to get into the game. And a lot of it's just coming. I'm not even trying, and a lot of it is just coming. So I'm going to just keep putting in work and go even harder now. Yeah. What do you feel is the improvement you made personally that you're most proud of for this season so far? Uh, Just my poise and my game is starting to slow down. It's starting to get a little bit slower to me. It's not an up-tempo game anymore. And uh, just like I'm kind of getting more mature, I'd say, uh, with better decision making and just time and score and just uh, listening to coach more and trying to be coachable and just trying to get what he's saying onto the court and sometimes it's just like a and trying to bottle up my emotions that's what he told me a lot and that's I've been working on just trying to be emotional on the court rather than being showing everybody my emotions channeling it in a good way yeah definitely um, it's a little late, congratulations, but you did get Player of the Week last week uh, mm-hmm. in the WAG. So how cool was that? I know you're all about team success, but yeah. personally, get something like that. How cool was that? Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, it's the first one, so I was kind of excited. But uh, hopefully I can get bigger things, achieve bigger goals. But ultimately, you don't get that unless you win. And so uh, I thank my teammates for that, too, because they bought into me. They gave give me the ball when I was hot. So I thank them, too, and Coach, too for uh, pushing me to where I need to be. And hopefully uh, we get bigger goals than that one. Yeah. Uh, Coach Chance has phoned you out multiple times as one of the most aggressive defenders on the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, you've had some pretty tough matchups, guys like Jaquan Lyle, you know, a couple other guys around the, throughout the season. Just mm-hmm. how much you look forward to those matchups, being uh, one of those guys that can lock them down? I don't know. I'm just – ultimately I'm super competitive, like really competitive. Like when coaches – when we start scouts and – Coaches just talking about players. I, I go to watch film after, and I go watch film on, like, pet moves and stuff like that just to see, like, how they other people guarded them and stuff. And I kind of take it personally when when um, I go up against good defenders because, I, I mean, good players because I feel like I, I should be there too. And I could – I'm up to their level too, so I try to defend up to their level. And a lot of good players like Jaquan Lau, he's really good. And Terrell Brown was really talented too. And – he made it difficult for me just as well as I made it difficult for him. So I just like the challenge, and it's always a laugh after. It's always a good game, you know. I'm cool with all those guys. So just the competitiveness is what drives me. I don't I don't really worry about nothing else. I just like to compete. Like It's just – it gets me going. Like, in practice, I, I don't like to lose anything, anything mm-hmm. at all. And it's just a different drive, and it's just a, a different type of feeling when I start playing basketball. That's why. Yeah, you mentioned uh, having a laugh. You guys had a pretty interesting situation in the elevator oh, here yeah, at the man. hotel. Um, I think Bryce is telling me that somebody was jumping on the elevator. I know you're probably not going to confirm who it yeah. was. Can you confirm it wasn't you? No, nah, it wasn't me. It wasn't okay, me. you confirmed that but, much. Yeah. Was. <laughs> they were jumping around and playing, and, and then it just stopped. And, yeah. Man, we were on there for a little minute. But it was pretty fun. It was pretty, pretty good cool. team bonding experience. Yeah, I had a lot of laughs. With those, so it was pretty fun. Nice. And I like to end all these interviews just by giving nickname ideas to the per- person that I'm interviewing. So if you have some mm-hmm. time, I'd like to just bounce a couple off your head, see how you feel about them. Mm-hmm. Okay, so first off, probably the most common one that comes to mind, but rice cooker. How are you feeling about rice cooker? Rice cooker. Hmm. 
What's the next option? <laughs> are the rice? I'm wondering. Are the are the rice like play on words getting old to you? Because I noticed it's a big thing. No, on no, 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 no. It's actually pretty funny to me. Okay. Uh, it's a lot of different ones, so okay. I, I don't really care. Got a lot you. Of stuff. Now I know you have a pretty good mix of like that old school gritty game with a little bit of that new school flair. Uh-huh. So how about Jabari Atari Rice? How are you feeling about that? Jabari one? Atari. Oh, that's pretty cool. You feel that that's one? Straight, yeah. All right. And then last one, I know you're from Houston, Texas, right? Mm-hmm. I'm from San Antonio, by the way. So just oh, okay, fellow okay. Texan. But uh, how about the Houston boiler? Because it seems like anytime you're on the court, you're cooking. Ah, uh, that was tough. I say the best that one for tough. last? Yeah, that awesome. was tough. Which one's your favorite Houston this boiler? The Houston, Houston boiler? Houston boiler, I'll take that one. Awesome, man. Well, that's all that I have. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you so you, much, bro. man. Yeah. So that was Jabari Rice talking about his breakout season and where he feels the team is at right now as it is riding an eight-game win streak. Shout out to him for taking the time to talk to me. Also, two for three on nicknames this time. The rice cooker was a miss, which honestly, I was a bit shaky on that one heading into the interview. But hey, we appreciate that honesty around here, Jabari. And I'm not mad at it because it seemed like he really was feeling the Houston boiler. That's my favorite too. Let me know which one you guys like the most. Also, if you want to know even more about Jabari's breakout year, I will be putting out a what Jabari Rice brings to the table article on Thursday. You guys really seem to enjoy the ones on Sean Buchanan, Evan Gilliard II, and Yvonne Adekoachea. So I'm going to make this a weekly series. That's right. We are going all out in 2020. But now let's move on to segment number three, which is a preview of New Mexico State's upcoming game against UTRGV. So the Aggies are traveling to Edinburgh, Texas to take on the Vaqueros this upcoming Saturday at 6 p.m. UTRGV is 6-12 and on the season, 2-3 and in whack play, but this team is still plenty dangerous, especially on its home court. Now, the Vaqueros actually have an impressive 76 to 64 win over UMKC under their belt at home, which is a team that New Mexico State only beat by three points at the Pan American Center. So let's get into this matchup. Here are some players that you need to know about. And the first one is Jordan Jackson, a six foot three senior, averaging a team high 14.9 points per game on 41.4% shooting from the field. This guy will put it in from anywhere on the court but he's at his best when he's looking for contact and getting to the free throw line. So the veteran draws an average of 5.7 fouls per 40 minutes, according to Ken Palm, which is the second highest average in the WAC. He's also shooting 84.7% from the charity stripe. So it's just easy money for him in that department. Fortunately, this is a really good matchup for Jabari Rice and Terrell Brown. Now, Brown only averages 1.8 fouls committed per 40 minutes, which is second in the WAC, according to Ken Palm. And Rice averages 3.27, which is 18th in the WAC. So these are two very disciplined shooting guards that the Aggies have. And we'll see if they can force Jackson to score in other other ways other than just those freebies on Saturday. Now next on the list is Leslie Varner II, who is one of the best two-way players in the WAC. The 6'7 senior has good length and lateral quickness, plus he's shooting the three ball at a 33.9% rate, which is pretty good for a power forward. He's also averaging a team high 5.9 rebounds per game to go along with his 13.6 points per game. So this guy does it all for UTRGB. Johnny McCants is going to get the bulk of this assignment, and as much as we all love to see the Crucis Crusader shoot it from deep, which he does really well, I'm actually looking for him to go to work down low on Varner because he's 190 pounds, not nearly as strong as Johnny. And Johnny is actually second in the WAC in two-point percentage at 64.5%, according to Ken Palm. That, to me, is where he has the real advantage since both players can shoot it from deep. Another guy to watch out for on this UTRGV team is Javon Levy, a 5'11 junior averaging 10.7 points per game. But his biggest contribution, without a doubt, is his passing. So Levy is averaging 8.4 assists per game. And his assist rate of 51.8 is first in the country by a mile, really. This dude has elite vision on the court and has an assist to turnover ratio of 3.4. So he's extremely sound with the basketball in his hands. Look for Evan Gilliard II and Sean Buchanan to get the assignment on Levy and try to disrupt him by taking some charges. So these guys are as good as it gets in that department. And if they can throw him off even a little bit, it'll have a huge effect on this game because he is a key facilitator, the biggest facilitator for UTRGV. Finally, one last thing to watch out for is the status of Trevlin Queen. So head coach Christian said that the senior landed funny and hurt his knee in the win over Utah Valley on Thursday and was still dealing with some soreness leading up to that game against Seattle. He did decide to play. It was a game time decision. He decided to get out there on the court and he played against the Red Hawks, but he actually sat out the last few minutes of that close game. Dan said it was more so because the unit on the court was in a rhythm though, and he just wanted them to close it out. Either way, it appears as if these next few days 
days will be really big for Queen just to get some rest and for the whole team, honestly. But he's getting looked at by doctors today, aka Monday as I'm recording this, to get a more concrete description of the injury. But now it is time for my key to success in this game, and it is ball security. I know we are thinking, no duh, Justin, but sometimes the most obvious answer is the correct one. And in this case, UTRGV ranks 30th in the country in turnovers forced per 100 possessions. They forced 23, and that's bad news for a New Mexico State team that has been struggling to not turn it over over all season. The Aggies actually only won this game last season on the road by a score of 63-61 to 61 because they committed 16 turnovers that the Vaqueros turned into 13 points. So we'll see if they can play some more disciplined basketball this time around. But now it is time for my prediction. So can I get a drum roll please? So for this one guys, I'm going to go with New Mexico State by a score of 72 to 67. I think the UTRGV is a very dangerous team and this prediction is assuming that Queen plays. But overall, I just feel like the Aggies have a better balance of offense and defense versus a real defensive minded Vaquero squad. And the way that they took better care of the basketball in that second half against Seattle hopefully is a sign of what's to come moving forward. So give me New Mexico State in a close one, guys. But that is going to do it for episode episode 12 of straight shooter if you have listened throughout the whole thing then thank you so much i truly appreciate it guys this has been justin martinez aka jay the sports dude and i'll see you guys next monday i'm out